Good afternoon, everyone. Um, welcome to this Lunch and Learn workshop on the California DREAM Act application. Uh, my name is Jose Cardenas. I'm a school counselor program specialist for Stockton Unified School Counseling Department. Um, I do work under student services. Uh, thank you to all of those families and students, uh, parents, and teachers who have joined us today. Uh, today, we will be doing a workshop on the California DREAM Act, really to understand a little bit more about the process of the California DREAM Act, and so to become familiarized with this uh, application. So here in Stockton Unified, we do have a mission that we want 100% of our students to complete their financial aid applications. So we know that is a lofty goal, but we believe that 100% of our students can go off to college, be career ready, and have the money to access in order to obtain a degree. Um, so we wanna make sure that all of our students in the 12th grade complete their financial aid applications. So again, today um, is one of those lunch and learn activities. We will, be we will be discussing the California DREAM Act application. So let's go ahead and get started. So there are two financial aid applications that a student could file. They could file the free application for federal student aid known as the FAFSA, or the California DREAM Act known, known as CADA. So what we wanna do is make sure that our students uh, for, for this particular reason, they're filing for the California DREAM Act. So today we're really gonna focus on the California DREAM Act. And how do you know um, who applies for the California DREAM Act? And so that's what we're gonna discuss is who will qualify to apply for the California DREAM Act and who this benefits. And so for the California DREAM Act, uh, students that will apply for the California DREAM Act, there's two different qualifications for, to apply for the FAFSA and for the California DREAM Act. For the sole purposes of the California DREAM Act, students that apply for the California DREAM Act will file, who will qualify under AB 540, SB 68 eligible students who are known as undocumented students or DACA students. Um, they can also be U visa holders or TPS protected status. Um, so we wanna make sure that we file one, not both. So in, for the purposes of the California DREAM Act, we will focus on who qualifies for the California DREAM Act. And so I'll go in a little bit more detail on that. So about the California DREAM Act application, um, the California DREAM Act application uh, is for, will allow students who are interested in attending an eligible California college, um, either university, uh, career or education or vocational program. And so in order to apply for state and campus financial aid. So you can also uh, get state financial aid programs that include the Cal Grant, the middle class scholarship and the Chafee Grant for foster youth. Um, which also requires an additional submission for online Chafee application. For those who apply for the California DREAM Act, um, you can also utilize these at the California Public Community Colleges and Universities. Um, they use this application to offer campus-based financial aid programs, such as the California Promise Grant that's offered at the community college, the state university grant known as SUSG at the CSUs, and the University of California grants. So these are at the UCs. So again, who is eligible? We talked a little bit about students that are eligible. Um, students that are eligible for the California DREAM Act are those individuals who would have qualified under the DREAM Act or often referred to as dreamers. Um, if you came to the United States uh, and you live and you go to school in California and meet the requirements of an AB 540, you may be eligible to apply for state and campus-based financial aid. Um, students with temporary protected status or those with a U visa may also be eligible to apply, but you also have to qualify under AB 540. So it's really important that um, students who will be attending a university um, and know that they're going to be eligible for the California DREAM Act, go ahead and apply for the California DREAM Act. So how do I access this application? So there's two ways to access this application. Um, the California DREAM Act can be found in an indirect access at the CSAC website, the California Student Aid Commission website at www.csac.ca.gov, or it can be found directly on the California DREAM Act webpage, which is at dream.csac.ca.gov. So there's two different places that this application can be accessed. 
So we're going to get into a little bit of the details of how to create an account. So if you're a brand new user, um, you've never opened up an account, um, this, so this is really for you. Um, so we're going to go ahead and start how to create an account on the California Dream Act application. So again, before you begin the application, you have to have an account. Um, so step number one is you definitely have to create an account. Step number two, you will check your email. And step number three, complete your application. So it's a pretty easy process, um, but we're going to go ahead and go a little bit more detail of that process. So when you first log into the California Dream Act application, you will see uh, this type uh, on the platform. You will see this on the web page. And so what you will see, uh, we're going to go ahead and base this as a first time user. So let's say we are a first time user. And we're going to go ahead and click on the start page. So for a first time user, that means you've never previously created an account or started the application. So you're new to the California Dream Act. Uh, you, you're about to start the application. Uh, so this is the first tab that you will go ahead and select. Uh, but for those of you who may be a returning user, for those of you who uh, maybe started the application, or maybe you need to renew your application, you would go ahead and select the returning user login. Now remember, this is uh, really want to go off of the first time user. And then there is one more section for the parent signature. Um, at the end of the application, it does require for a parent to sign. It's actually a pretty easy process. Um, it requires a, a parent just to put in a, a PIN to access the student's application. And it's a much easier process to fill out the, uh, the signature page on the California Dream Act. And so when we go to create an account, we want to make sure that uh, we are, when we register, we have, we follow everything in order on the form. Um, make sure that we fill out all the minimum required fields that are indicated with a red asterisk. Um, although we recommend completing the entire form in, in, in order to expedite, expedite your application um, and processing time. But you want to make sure that you are on this web page to when you start this registration process. So read all the questions, please, please read all the directions, uh, all the mandatory questions, uh, because you don't want this to delay your application. And so in order to create your account, you have to complete all of these required fields. Um, so the first thing you wanna do is you wanna go ahead and complete your first name as it appears on the government issued ID. Um, also want to match these records with your school or any Cal Grant submission. Um, you want to enter your last name as it appears on government issued ID. Um, we know that students with either a very long name, um, you're going to put in as many characters that possibly fit. And, and if you also want to use the name that has been on your either school records, on your college applications, um, also on your Cal Grant submissions, you want to make sure that matches. You want to enter your date of birth. Um, you want to create a user ID consisting of five to eight characters and make sure you write this username ID down. Um, you don't want to create multiple accounts. And, I mean, you cannot change this. So you want to make sure that you write down your user ID um, and then provide a personal email address. A lot of students tend to provide their school email. So it's really important that you provide a personal email address because after you graduate, uh, your email at the school districts tend to be uh, disactivated or deactivated um, at the end of the year. So you want to make sure that you use a personal email address that's active, one that you check quite often. And then you're going to go ahead and submit this. Please make sure that you write down your username. That's a really important part of all of this. Um, when you're doing this demographic part, make sure that you are providing the most accurate information and you fill out everything with a red asterisk. Um, you don't want to make any errors on this part. Uh, because this is the part where if you make any errors and it's not accurate information, uh, then it's going to delay your application. So once you create an account, what will happen next is you will receive an email. So make sure that you check your email. Um, you will get a link that would allow you to create a password. After you get this link, click on create a password. Uh, once you create this password, write down the password, keep it with your username, uh, because this is again, a very important uh, document, very important form that, or application that you're filling out. Once you um, have created both your username and password, you can go ahead and sign in to the application for the first time. And so when we go ahead and start the application, um, 
you create an account, or you're gonna choose the academic year that you're gonna be attending college. Uh, we know for this class of 2020, you know, it's the 2019, 2020 school year. And so automatically you think, I'm gonna go ahead and apply for the 2019, 2020. Well, you will select the year that you will be attending college. So for that class of 2020, you will be selecting the, the, the year of 2020, 2021, because that's the year you will be attending college. So make sure that you select the appropriate year. This is a common mistake that students make. They make the mistake by selecting the year that they're graduating, not that the year that they're going to college. So very important part here, make sure you select the year that you will be attending college to fill out that financial aid application form. So now that you have successfully created an account, you can begin the application, the California DREAM Act application. So the California DREAM Act application is actually a pretty simple process. Within the student portal part or student information, there's only two sections. And then it moves on to the parents. Uh, in the parent section, it's really asking parents information and also income. Um, and so it goes from demographics and then it's asking for the student, it'll ask, you know, what schools, Make sure that you list the schools that you will be attending. You can list up to 10. Um, and then you can also go back and list more. We always suggest that students select at least one community college, one CSU, one UC, and one private school. So then that way uh, you can be eligible for all of the A that's possible, uh, depending on where you're applying. Um, and again, it's gonna ask for some dependency questions. So every student at this point should be dependent. There are other circumstances where students are not. Um, and then it's gonna ask again for those financial parts. The submission page for, the, uh, for students to sign, it's a very simple process. You click on student submit signature and then it'll sign. Make sure that you constantly save this application because students tend not to save. They think it automatically saves. Please make sure that you save this application. And again, it's a very simple process for the California Dream Act application. So just to recap a little bit, so the California Dream Act application opens up on October 1st. So you've had since October 1st to submit this application. It is now uh, December. And so we wanna make sure that you submit this application as early as possible. We know that the deadline is March 2nd for California, uh, but you wanna make sure that this application is turned in as soon as possible. So you're eligible for all the aid that could be coming your way. So the California Dream Act is specifically for undocumented students for AB 540 students. Um, this, so you're only eligible for state aid. And so this is an example of state aid that you can qualify for. So an example of state aid that a, a dreamer could qualify for, an AB 540 student can qualify for a Cal Grant B or a C, which is either $1,672 or $1,094 for the Cal Grant C. You can also get a student success completion grant that could be up to $4,000. The California Promise Grant, which will waive all your tuition, which means you don't have to pay any fees to attend college. So that could be pretty substantial. Uh, or the Chafee, if you're a foster youth and you're also a dreamer, you can also qualify for up to $5,000 to the Chafee Grant. So let's break that down a little bit more. Um, so for the Cal Grant A, um, you can get up to uh, $12,570 at a UC. Um, so that's pretty substantial money there, or up to $5,742 at a CSU. That almost covers your entire tuition at a UC or CSU. If you end up getting a Cal Grant B, you can get up to $1,672 or up to $12,570 at a UC, or $1,672 your first year, which will add up to $5,742 at a CSU. Again, almost covering all of your tuition. At a two-year college, you can get up to uh, $1,672 every year for those two years. Also know that you can save, if you get a Cal Grant B and you go to community college, you can save that money. So when you transfer to a four-year university, um, if you're thinking about going to a vocational or technical school, um, you can be eligible for a Cal Grant C, um, which is about $1,094, which really helps out when you attend a career or technical school. So there is substantial financial aid for students who will qualify for California Dream Act. So let's say you file your California Dream Act, but you're also needing some other resources, right? You, you, like I said, it almost covers all of your tuition. You might have to cover room and board. So there are other resources and other agencies out there that are willing to help our undocumented students. 
um, you know, also our dreamer students. So there is a program called Immigrant Rising. So an Immigrant Rising program um, really helps transform lives through education. And so they get a lot of resources for students who are undocumented, um, specifically in forms of college and career and financial aid. So some of the resources that they offer is a step-by-step -step plan on how to apply. So they have this planned in phases. It's called the California Dream Act Map, um, Steps to Successfully Apply. So it goes through all of the steps of applying for financial aid. So it breaks it down uh, for students and for families. And this could be found on the Immigrants Rising website. So this has been really helpful for students to follow in phase one, what they would be doing for financial aid in phase two, what to follow, and then phase three, and then phase four. So it breaks it down in detail for students and families. Immigrants Rising also has put together an app uh, for a uh, a resource for scholarships. And so this resource for scholarships um, is specifically for uh, undocumented students uh, who are looking to receive other types of aid. Remember, you can get financial aid to the California Dream Act, which is state aid or institutional aid, but you can also get scholarships outside. And so these are additional resources that will be linked. Um, please look into these scholarships. They can be very helpful. And last but not least, within Stockton Unified, we also have our own local scholarships. Now, some of the local scholarships are tied to citizenship, but others are not. And so definitely uh, DREAMers or undocumented students can apply to a local scholarship within Stockton Unified um, and also apply for national scholarships. Um, if you're thinking about attending a private university, uh, undocumented students can also apply for the CSS profile, which is a college scholarship service for private universities. And you can also use other search engines. So we talked a little bit about Immigrants Rising, but also on fastweb.com, on ScholarMe, Going Mary, College Board. But within Stockton, we also have a Stockton Scholars Opportunity for students. We also have the Community Involvement Program. Um, you should never have to pay for a scholarship resource. Remember, scholarships are free. It's a free service. It's free information, the applications are free. So you should never have to pay anybody to get this type of information. So please, uh, you know, supplement the money that you get for financial aid. Don't leave that money on the table. Also apply for scholarships uh, once you have completed your California Dream Act. Uh, so again, this is a resource that lives in our Stocking Unified webpage. Uh, we also want to mention that there's resources, right, on the, Cal on the California Student Aid Commission website they have a live chat resource. So students and parents and families can go on and ask questions. Uh, for example, you know, what is the California Dream Act application? Am I eligible, a 540 student? Uh, what financial aid is available for dreamers? Uh, what is deferred action for childhood arrivals? What is DACA? DACA? Um, and other resources for California Dream Act application. So you can do a live chat. Um, again, it's linked here, but go ahead and you go to, on to the Student Aid Commission under the help section. It will have a live chat function. And also here locally, um, there are Cash for College workshops all over the state of California. But here in California specifically, or here in our area, um, there are financial aid workshops to help you complete your California Dream Act. So there are workshops all the month of December. There will be more workshops in January and February. There are your local high schools, um, your counselors set them up. So talk to your school counselors. They are working with Delta College and they will help you complete your California Dream Act. Um, and just for the quick um, FAQ, I want to make sure that even though you apply for the California Dream Act, all male students must register for the selective service. So any students who are 18 to 25, regardless of immigration status, must register for the selective service to receive state aid. Um, Dreamers are unable to register online, which means they have to get the paper form. Uh, so you can get that at any post office. Uh, you could do this form at the age of 17 and three months. If you're not registered with the selective service, then and you don't have your proof of registration, it's really important to have that before uh, you have to do any kind of verification process. So the selective service is a necessary element to get financial aid for the California Dream Act. So again, uh, you do have to register. And last but not least, just wanna say thank you all for attending today. Uh, we will be having more information. Uh, if you have questions, you can reach us on our college and career website at stockingusd.net slash financial aid. We will continue to have these workshops for you. Um, if you have any questions, please reach out to your school counselors. Your school counselors are here to help. 
Uh, we're here to help you with your California Dream Act application, with any other questions that you have about college and career. So thank you for, very much for attending today. Glad to have you here.